My brother, let me ask you a question. Don't shy away from the, don't even worry, that's for the protection of the people. What is your father? What, what is your nationality? Native American? Okay, perfect. I want you to come here. Take a look at something. Um, are you familiar with the Bible? Are you familiar with the history of what happened with your people concerning uh, the Caucasian race? You, you understand that they came here, they, con they took your land, pretty much colonialism, what is called colonialism. They not only took your land, but then they enslaved your people, indoctrinated them with, with false doctrine. You see this image here? This was forced on your people, right? Do you know that history? Let me, let, me, let, me, let me show you this, right? According to the Bible, guess what? God has a chosen people called the children of Jacob, the children of Israel. You said your father's a Native American, right? He had 12 sons. And that right there is a sign that shows who his sons are. Gad is one of his sons. Gad is the forefather of the people called Native Americans today. That's right! I want to show you your history in the Bible, right? For instance, prior to you coming to this land, no one was here before, right? You guys were the first ones here before the so-called white man came, right? I want to show you that history in the Bible. Give me that Ezra. Pay close attention. Because this Bible, believe it or not, was used to in, was was used against us through indoctrination. What I mean by is this. They would hold the Bible, but they would teach us falsehood, things that weren't of the Bible. So in turn, when we came to what we would call our senses, we shy away from it because we have not fully understood the truth of the Bible. A lot of us don't take the time to actually read it. Watch this. I want to show you some history. 14. 13 verse 4. You got it? Bring it up! Come on. St. Ezra, chapter 13, verse 40. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king. Okay, so there was a time when Hosea the king, who was an Assyrian, was ruling the earth, okay? The ten tribes this is referring to is the ten tribes of the northern kingdom. When you look on the sign, you're going to see Judah, Benjamin, Levi. Then you're going to see Ephraim on down. This is referring to that particular group of the tribes. Ephraim down. Read. Whom Salmaneser, the king of Syria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters. And so came they into another land. Read. But they took this counsel among themselves. So this is this is talking about a time where your forefathers were set free from captivity. Okay? They took it upon themselves. They counseled together to come up with this plan. What's the plan that they came up with? That they would leave the multitude of the heathen. Because we all come from, guess what? Guess where you come from? You originally come from Jerusalem, Israel. That's your homeland. That's right. But in this time, heathen conquered us as a people. So when your forefathers were set free, they took a council among themselves to leave that side of the earth. Read. And go forth into a further country uh -huh. where never man do, mankind dwelt. Where never mankind dwelt. That is known as the United the Americas today, northern and southern America. That's where no man, the, the uh, mankind never dwelt. Read on. That they might they keep their statutes, uh -huh. which they never kept in their own land. You see that? So the plan of your forefathers were to come here and keep the commandments of God, to live peacefully, right? They wanted to leave that side of the earth, to leave from among the other nations, to keep the commandments, right? Funny thing that that's brought out. Give me Numbers 15. I want you to pay close attention. You see how your forefathers dress, right? I, you, you're not partaking in that particular customs, but the custom of wearing fringes in their clothing. Where do you think that comes from? Watch this. Number 15, verse 37. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak to who? Speak unto the children of Israel. So God is telling Moses to speak to my people, the children of Israel, the tribes of Jacob. Read. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. That they make them what? Them fringes in the borders of their garments. You see that? That's why our forefathers in the tribe of Gad wore fringes in their garments. They knew who they were. They knew where they came from. And that was the custom they kept, even till this day. 
To this day, they do it with a very blur, blurry understanding of why they do it. They know it comes from their ancestors, but they don't know that they're the children of Israel. This is a knowledge that our people don't have today. Bring it up. But the Most High has given us the spirit of understanding back, and that's why we're here teaching you. You're from the tribe of Gad. So what are the friends? Read it again. We're going to go into why why we wear them. Read. Speak unto the children of Israel uh -huh. and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments uh -huh. throughout their generations. Read. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders of a ribbon of blue. That's why when you look at the apparel of the Native American Indians, you'll see a lot. Oftentimes, when they have fringes all throughout their garments. All right. That's coming from the Bible. Read. And it shall be unto you for a fringe. Now this is the purpose. This is why God gave us that commandment. Read. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that he may look upon it mm -hmm. and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So it was supposed it's supposed to remind us that we're God's chosen people and we got to keep his commandments. This is part of a dress code that the one true God gave Thank us, you. his people. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. So that's that's a little that's just a little clarification on who the Native Americans really are. And that's just a few things we want to show you in the Bible. But they'll never teach you this. They've never taught you this. And instead, they had to they tried to push this on our people to deceive us. And in turn, a lot of times we often shy away from the Bible because of that history. But don't shy away from the Bible because it's really your family history. That's right. Read that. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art a holy people, but to the Lord thy God. So this is a holy thing. The dress code that your your fathers wear, the how they dress with the French, that's a holy thing. Read. But to the Lord thy God, uh -huh. the Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people. So the Native American Indians, believe it or not, you guys are a special people, a very special people. And the world is waiting for the awakening of the tribe of Gad. Because guess what? When that happens, this kingdom is over. That's right. Read it up. To be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Native Americans are considered by God to be above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Now ask yourself this. Does it seem that way today? Does it seem that you're above all people that are upon the face of the earth? Why not? Why would you say no? Let it bring some understanding. Why would we not be able to look at the Native Americans today and say they are not above all people upon the face of the earth? Because of the conditions that they're living in, right? Now, tell me, speak on some of the conditions that your, your fathers, your people are living in. Heroin. Heroin. What else? Yeah, okay. Trying to get your language back. Okay. All right. So let's look at, well, first let's look at, give me Romans chapter 11, verse 13. 13, verse 11. Hey, my man, stick around for a second. Give me one, one more second of your time. All right. Give me that real quick. Listen to this. <clears throat> Wait. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Stop. Right, right now, prior to you coming and hearing me out, you were sleeping. You were sleepwalking. You were among the walking dead. Okay, but now it is high time that you awake. Guess what? If you want the suffering of your people to end, it is high time that you awake. Right now is the time for you to wake up and snap out of it. Read on. For now is our salvation nearer than we will believe. Our salvation is to be the top nation among, of, upon the earth. That's our salvation. Our salvation is to be delivered from the reservations in the ghettos of America. That's our salvation. Now, by all means, if you want to continue there and walk down the street, but if you seek freedom, then I advise that you stick around and learn a little more about what this truth has to offer. Because God says, if my people will hearken and be obedient unto me, I will set them above all nations upon the earth. That's right. And that's who you are. You are a chosen people, a special people unto the one true God. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 22. I want to show you a little bit of why your people are in the condition they're in and where they went off. They went off into idolatry. For instance, there's a philosophy among the Native Americans about spirituality. 
And they, they believe that all things can be worshipped as spiritual things, right? But it is not so, because the one true God has created all things. Actually, 13 verse 1. Watch this. See, verse 1. Read. Surely vain are all men by nature. See, surely vain are all men by nature. Read. Who are ignorant of God. And what does it mean to be ignorant of God? It mean, That means to be disobedient to the one true God. Or to even understand or acknowledge that there is one true God. Birds, the fish of the sea, the stars, those are not things to be worshipped. Guess why? Because they were created for you. Not to worship. The one true God created those things for you so that you could experience life and be a lord over it. But our forefathers, including the tribe of Gad, had went off into idolatry. They started to worship those things. So read that again. Surely they are all men by nature read. who are ignorant of God. Read. It could not out of the good things that are seen know him that is. See, we, can, we, we ought to be spiritual enough to look at the world and say, wow, God is great. Look at what he has created. But instead, our forefathers went off and looked at the things God has created and said, wow, I'm going to worship that tree. But the tree did not create anything. It was created. Read. Neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the work master. Neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the work master. Every day we walk up and down the streets, we see the greatness of God's creation and the gift he has given to all men. And we don't consider, we don't even stop to give him praise and to acknowledge him. That's what's wrong with us as a people. We have moved away from true spirituality. We have moved away from the one true God, who, believe it or not, has chosen you to be his people to proclaim his name upon the earth. That's your duty. That's your purpose. Read. Verse 2. But be either fire or wind, or the swift air. You see that? Our forefathers deemed, what was that, water? But be either fire or wind, or the swift air, uh -huh. or the circle of the stars, uh -huh. or the violent water. Read. Or the lights of heaven to be, gods, uh, to be the gods which govern the world. You see, we have given the attributes of things created by God to actually be God, which is backwards. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Do you understand the philosophy and the thought that are in the minds of our people? They live contrary according to what is written. Therefore, that's why we live in the conditions that we live in. Read on. Verse 3. Um, verse 3 with those beauty if they're being delighted took them to be gods Read. let them know how much better the Lord of them is so we as a people have to repent from what is called idolatry we have to repent from that and that is something that the Native Americans do till this day and that's why you're living in what is called reservations give me that in uh, Deuteronomy 28 verse 16 hey bro take the flyer Look us up. We're here every Sabbath. Every Saturday. Okay. Give me first John verse 4. I see you're listening to the word. I want to see so I wanna I wanna find out something about your understanding according to the Bible. You said you speak Spanish, right? Um what is your father? What, what's your nationality? What was that? Huh? Not not religion. What's your nationality? Is your father Dominican? Okay, so that means you're look at you see this look at the sign right here? That means you're from the tribe of Simeon. That's right. You're from one of the twelve tribes of Israel, God's chosen people. That's who you are. Watch this. First John verse uh first John four verse one. First John chapter four verse one. Be up. Believe not every spirit. But try the spirit. You see, the Bible says don't believe every spirit, right? But try the spirit. You understand that? You understand that, my man? So the Bible, read it again. Be up. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirit. And this is how you try the spirit. This is how you prove whether the spirit is true or not, right? Read. Whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out in the world. The Bible says that there's a lot of false prophets that have gone out in the world, right? You understand what a false prophet is? What's a false prophet? Someone who's, who's fake, right? Who's teaching lies, right? You agree with that, brother? Yeah. Okay, read on. 
Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. So this is how you know the Spirit of God. Read. Every spirit that confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. In the what? In the flesh. In the what? In the flesh. Read. Is of God. So every spirit that confesses Christ came in the flesh is of God. Right? That's right. So if Christ came in the flesh, according to the Bible, what did he look like? What? You say he's a black man, right? You went to the Catholic Church, right? Is this a picture of Christ they have in the Catholic Church? No. They don't have that picture in the Catholic Church. That's a lie. Every Catholic Church I've been to worships this this guy down here Wait. as Jesus Christ. That one? Yeah. yeah. The gringo. They say that's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, right? But that's not true according to the Bible. In the Bible, we're going to read how Christ really looks like. Bring it up! Christ looks like you. Christ is darker than you. You look like Jesus. I'm going to show you. Read it. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. Remember the scripture says every spirit that confessed Christ came in the flesh is of God, right? Meaning you have to proclaim, yes, Jesus Christ was here as a man. So if he was here and he was crucified, that means he had a body. So if he had a body, what did he look like? Remember the false prophets teach lies, they're fakes. And I'm going to prove to you today that that is false. Read. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So Jesus Christ had wool hair. Hair kind of like your texture. And it was white. Okay? Read. As white as snow. Uh huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his eyes had a red to him because he drank wine. There's a prophecy. Give me that in Genesis. Genesis 49 verse 12. Go into the prophecy about the coming Messiah of Christ and why his eyes were red. Genesis chapter 49 verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. You see that? It says his eyes shall be red with wine. What was one of Jesus' first miracles we read about the Bible? Absolutely, they're teaching lies. That's they're not, right. If they're not teaching, watch this. John 7, verse 38. Listen to what Jesus said. Watch. Get up. John, John, verse 38. John 7, verse 38. And it's not me who's proclaiming the lies. It's the Bible that's showing that they're lies. That's right. Because that's where we're reading from, right? Watch this. He that believe on me, as the scripture has said. How shall we believe on Christ? As the scripture has said. Read. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So the Bible says you have to believe on Christ as the scripture said. Right. Show me one scripture that says Christ is a gringo. There's, there is none. But I just read to you. Go back to Revelation 1 verse 14. His head and his hands were white like wool. In the Bible and in the Bible you have, you will see that hair, Christ has hair like wool. Read. As white as snow. So he doesn't have long, stringy hair. That's not biblical. That's That picture is wrong. Read. And eyes he has a flame of fire. And he has red eyes. Read. That's in the Bible. Watch this. Read. And his feet like a fine brass. As if they burn in a furnace. What color is brass? Your color. Brass as if what? As if they burn in a furnace. Now when I look at your feet, because I can see your feet, the rest of your body is the same color as your feet, right? So Christ is a black man according to the Bible. That's right! I want to show you something, right? What you so you've been how long have you been in the Catholic Church? How many years? A lot of years, right? All right. A lot of years you've been in a church. Give me Matthew 24, verse 24. A lot of years, all of us have come out of churches, out of different doctrines and religions, right? You're familiar. Do you go to church? No, not anymore. Well, you're familiar. You, everybody is familiar with the idea of Christ, right? But we never, we never established the true understanding because we never took it upon ourselves to actually read the Bible. We would go to church and we would want them to make us feel good about living, right? Right? You go to church and when you go to church, you feel like you're doing the right thing, right? But we have to take it upon ourselves to find out whether or not they're teaching the truth. Read that. Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. Read. For they shall arise false Christ. You see that? Christ in his time even says, 
there's gonna come false Christ. And guess what? It has come. That's it right there. That's the false Christ that's come. That's why they conquered the so-called Dominicans. They conquered the so-called Native Americans who are really God's chosen people. And you see, she runs from the truth. Our people don't want to know that Christ is a black man. They don't want to know they look just like Christ. They're, they're, they're way more comfortable with serving the white man. Why? Because they still have the slave mentality. That's right. 832? But this is what Christ says, my man. For instance, many years we have lived a lie, right? And we seek comfort in this lie. We seek so seek so much comfort in this lie that when we actually when we actually do obtain things of this world, we uh, tend to think it's peace. Like for instance, you might have a job, right, right. you might have an apartment, you know what I'm saying? You might have a girl. Cause I'm and you think you're at peace, you think you're free, right? Yeah, but it's not a body and body righteous law. Right, it is not a body and body righteous law. Not only that, but the freedom and peace you seek is far beyond comprehension. That's what Christ has to offer in this truth. Read that. Try at the eight verse thirty-two, uh -huh. and he shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Give me the truth. So the truth is going to make us free. What tribe are you from? I was born. I was raised off uh, black and Native American. Black and Native American. All right. Um, hold that. Give me Numbers one eighteen. I want to show you something. According to the Bible, this is how you determine your. Pedigree. Yeah, by your father. By your father, right. I'm going to read it to you in the scriptures. Read. Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. Uh -huh. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Uh -huh. And they declared their pedigree after their families by the house of their father. Like you just said, that's in the Bible. And understand, when men are speaking about God, guess what? They have to come out of the Bible. So that's why I'm going to go to scriptures to prove everything that I said, all right? So you're absolutely right. The Bible teaches us that we determine who we are by the house of our father, by the seed. So what is your father? Uh, no, sure, it wasn't my life, but uh -huh. I know black and Native American. Black and Native American. So remember. I know they, biblically they don't go by like can't be half or half, half exactly so for you to say that your father's black and native american yeah, is wrong so yeah. what is his father do you know no nah. okay so either way if it is black then you would be from the tribe of Judah. if it is native american then you would be from the tribe of gad that's right way, be happy that you're from one of the 12 tribes that's right <laughs> okay because we're all a chosen people a special people and guess what give me revelation chapter 7. bring it up first read Hold Revelation 7, but read Psalms 142. Mike 119 verse 142. He said, you're going to know the truth, and the truth is going to make you free, right? Read that. So, chapter 119 verse 142. Uh -huh. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Now, you have said something. It's not living by the righteous laws of God, right? right. And you're absolutely Society right. According to the Bible, God's righteousness, his laws, is an everlasting, meaning they're always going to be here. His laws are the only way to establish perfection in the earth. And he gave us that as a people, including the tribe of Gad. Read. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, uh -huh. and thy law is the truth. You see that? So according to the Bible, God's laws is the truth. Because God's laws teaches us that we have to have love one for another. God's laws teaches us, thou shalt not steal. 12,000 men are going to be established as leaders for the nation of Israel. And guess what? 12,000 of those men are going to be from the tribe of Gad. So if you are of Gad, then take heed because it's very important that you understand why you're hearing these words today. Right? The Bible says that we're going to be sealed, right? Give me that in Isaiah 8, verse 16. This is what we have to be sealed with as men, as leaders. Okay? Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. Seal the law among my disciples. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC.
to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join our UIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.